afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-Earth. My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, joined as always by my friend Grifflet, who uh, really felt bad for Sithgar, uh, because here Sithgar was standing here kicking the air in vain uh, uh, in his frustration. Uh, so Grifflet has very selflessly given him his own shins to kick here uh, to, you know, figuring that would be a little bit more satisfying. But in the end, it really hasn't seemed to help. Um, so, anyway, uh, uh, Sithgar, you'll just have to keep doing your thing, I guess. Because we've got stuff to do. Because Grifflet discovered, having come here just to find him, who is uh, Sithgar here, who is the missing dude, uh, now discovers that uh, there's like a ton of quests. All of the, min the Beacon Hills related quests all seem to be gathered here in... Uh, uh, in uh, Ostrimen here. So, we are going to work on those. All right, so um, we're going to gonna do them one at a time. We're not going to, we're going to, we're going to save the Halifurian for last because, come on, Tomb of Elendil, right? So excited. So excited. I've got to think. No, I, I literally, I actually have no idea. I've never seen the Tomb of Elendil in game. But I've got to think that the Tomb of Elendil, the odds are they're going to make it really big and spectacular because that's what they generally do in Lotro, make things bigger. Um, and it would make a certain amount of sense, of course. Sorry, my volume is up really loud. It would make a certain amount of sense, of course, because um, the, uh, I mean, Elendil's tomb, for crying out loud. But at the same time, it was kind of meant to be, like, a little discreet. So I wonder. I can't wait. Can't wait. Um, all right. Yeah, the other tomb of Elendil. I know there was the tomb of Elendil up in, uh, 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 what you call it, Enuminous, right? That you guys are thinking of. Um, hopefully this one won't have any giant turtles in it. Um... All right, so what are we doing here? Oh, right. So, all right. Um, um, I was going to start on the inside, on the quarry, but that's okay. We're out here. So, um, what is the get? help Sithgar? I, wait. Help him do what? Hang on a second. I'm confused. I'm forgetting. What was that one about? Help him recover his horse. Right. Where, where, where is his horse? Hang on. Sithgar, if I could interrupt you for one more moment here. Yeah, oh, hang on. I can't get around the fence. I'm having troubles. Okay. Sithgar, tell me again. What's... Okay. I'm Wandering sure. these hills. Well, that's helpful. Okay. So, in fact, the map is giving me no assistance whatsoever. Great, no problem. Um, oh, I see. No, the horseless rider is the same quest. I'm so. Oh, a gift gone astray. Oh, I see. This is the repurposing of the original Sithgar quest, which spun off the second one. Tracking now. Got it. So the horseless rider is orange. So okay. So the horse is way over here. Gotcha. All right. Okay. That's weird. That's a little strange. I'm not gonna lie. That's a little strange. But okay, what are the blue quests that are right near to home here? Um, a perilous parley. Oh, I'm supposed to find. Oh, I'm supposed to find the dude. Who wants to have a parley? The one who's captured the uh, the sun somewhere. Okay, so somewhere. In through here. Okay. No more orc message bearers. Of that, I am sure. So I'm looking for Gondrad. Anybody seen him? I'm not going to ask the orc messengers, though. I'm going up into the hills. Wait a second. 
that seems to cover the town inside the walls. Is he in the town? What? Oh, Gondrad. Yeah, dude. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, so I have a hard time remembering things one week to the next. Uh, this is my issue. Let's go back into the town. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right. Hang on. Wait, I'm supposed to remove caltrops. I remember that. That's easy enough. Since I'm here, I'll remove caltrops on the way. Okay. All right. So I'm glad to be back with you guys today. I, uh, I'll be, this is my one non, one weekend in which I don't have a Signum moot. Uh, we have three moots in four weeks here during this stretch, and this is the one week we don't. So I'm actually not traveling or mooting. I didn't travel last weekend because the, the, the conference we had was here in New Hampshire. Um, so, uh, oh man, apparently I started six eighths of the caltrops way down the road. Okay, no problem. We do have a cool event tomorrow, Druid's Fire. You're correct about that, but it's not a moot. Uh, tomorrow, we are doing our space, our fall space showcase, which is really cool. Um, space, of course, is our adult education program, which is just awesome. Uh, folks who have been, um, folks who have been participating in that have just loved our space programs. One month modules on really, really fun uh, topics. Uh, that people have been loving the opportunity to learn about and um, anyway we've been uh, we have a showcase coming up tomorrow uh, giving some basically previews of uh, the many of the modules we're going to be offering over the next uh, uh, over the next few months and it's uh, it's pretty cool alright this is not Gondra this is Narvelion Trying to remember who's who and where's where. So, Gondrad, I do remember Gondrad. See, I thought I was, uh, the reason I was confused before about this quest was that I remembered that the Parley quest was about going up to, uh, um, you know, have the Parley on her behalf, basically. So I thought I was being sent up to meet the Orc Chieftain uh, for the Parley. But no. Huh. What's that path? Did I see that path before? Oh, interesting. Little interior. You know, let's explore up there. I didn't see that path. I missed it completely when I was going through the town last time. I was sort of at a hurry at the end of the stream, but what's the uh, little inner sanctum of Ostrimen up here? Oh, better know what it is. Like the beacon, right? This is where the beacon is? Okay, so those stairs were going up onto the walls up there. Okay. And this goes up to the beacon. Hey, Caltrops! What do you know? That's convenient. How did the orc messengers get in through here? I guess there are other ways up here, right? Oh, it, this is going out to Eralos. I see. It's, I was I was thinking this was the Minrimmon one, but no, I see that's over there. 
Okay, fine. Well, this is the way to Eralas, and it looks like there isn't really any other convenient way over there, so might as well. We're kind of going all around in circles trying to figure things out here today. But I'll sort it out eventually. Oh. Now, hang on. That is Nardo? Yeah. That's Nardo, I'm seeing. With the bridge that goes over to the quarry. Okay, that's cool. Discovered Eros. Didn't I have an actual quest for all the beacons? Yeah, the paraffin quest. That was it. Okay. Oh, man. More paraffin up at the top. And flints, too. Courage and Light. That's the relevant quest here. Okay. I'm supposed to collect all these in order to, pre to prevent the beacons from being lit. Is that... Is the, what was the purpose of this quest again? Narvel on the Beacon Keepers asked you to gather them from the beacons. Oh, he left his supplies in other places. Okay. I see. So those are surplus, are they? Okay. Hey, Drowstank, glad you're enjoying that and really happy to talk about it, but it feels inappropriate to talk about it here. Uh, I am concerned that that might seem rude uh, if I were to do that, if you follow me. Um, uh... Yeah, I mean, I was been thinking about that, of course. But um, anyway, yeah, uh, I need a different venue. We can talk about that. Um, but um, oh yeah, hey, <clears throat> Amen Moto is here. It's your first time with us live, isn't it? Welcome, Scott. Um, So what is this? A little uh, little compound where the beacon keepers stay? <laughs> it looks like it looks like here are the two houses for the tall beacon keepers and one for the short beacon keeper. <laughs> uh, okay. Lots of outbuildings. Oh man. Oh good. Well, hopefully, I think that orc message bearer might have aggroed on me, which means he'll be running in the opposite direction. So I guess I don't have too much to worry about. Maybe they do employ a hobbit beacon keeper. Kind of looks that way. Okay, so that's up to the beacon. And this is done. Now, what is this over here? What is this quest? Uh, three the straw men what gather trampled grass and sticks oh right to of course making straw men in order to pretend there are more men than there are right it's a ruse okay so I'm supposed to be able to all right, hang on a second. Let's uh, let's do this proper then. So I might be able to find trampled grass through here, might I? I'll look. 
I'll look, but I don't see any. I don't see any. I am not having an argument with a straw man. I'm just trying to build them. Never argue with straw men. They're terrible disputants. Hmm. Well, there's a cliff. Hang on, so back in this direction, I'm supposed to be able to find much of everything. No, there's some questing things and some, or some, oh, look, a stick. I found a stick. That's exciting. A very egg scout seems to have found me as well. Meanwhile, I'm just going to like fight every mob in the region, apparently as they're all going to aggro onto me one after the other. Okay. Well, where there's one stick, there's probably more. In fact, there we go. Proud how I grabbed that stick in the middle of here without aggroing anybody. It is much more elegant to complete landscape quests like this with uh, without fighting. It sounds like a proverb, Jostnik. Yes, I agree. One stick is lonely, as the rabbits would say. Okay. Oh, there are now quest rings for sticks. I, I, I have apparently come to a stick-rich area. Yes, indeed. Oh, more sticks. Two sticks. Okay, it's got to be a sixth stick, surely. I think that must be what is around the corner here. Come on now. There it is. Excellent. Okay. What does our map look like now? It still seems to be under the impression. Uh, okay. Oh, no, it's not. So the grass is up there. What's that down there? Eyes on us ribbon. Oh, it's the very... I'm supposed to be hunting those dudes. Very egg scouts. Okay, fine. Now I shall seek them out, at which point they're going to immediately disperse, no doubt. The field was lousy with them when I was trying to avoid them. All right. Uh, let's, um, let's do a lower question while I hunt very egg scouts. Okay. All right. 
uh, Nico Marcus Flavius was asking to talk about uh, so this is a while back in Minas Tirith talk about passwords for the seven gates made me wonder what we know about the literacy rates of the common people in Middle Earth today no one remembers their passwords although they aren't as easy as lore uh, because we could just write them down but presumably the people of Minas Tirith and Greater Gondor were almost entirely oral what about some of the higher classes, like craftsmen and soldiers? We know that Frodo's book learning was unique among hobbits. But what about the men of Gondor, Eriador, and Rohan? As for elves, one would assume they are all literate, but interestingly enough, their tradition seems primarily oral, so do you think it's possible that some elves or group of elves did not read? Maybe certain of the Sindar? Also, if we assume that the elves carried on a primarily oral tradition and yet were all literate, uh, I find that incredibly interesting, and I cannot think of many real-world cultures where the majority of the population was fully literate, and yet their culture was still primarily spoken and not written. Um, the primary um, the primary thing that I would say there is that um, it is very hard to find very many real-world cultures in which the people are immortal. Um, because yes, the um, elves do have a primarily um, a primarily written culture. In fact, um, uh, or sorry, a primarily oral culture. In fact, we're told that uh, many of the elves uh, don't like writing, and um, they don't, you know they, they don't like text um, because they strongly prefer uh, memory. And oral. So there are two things to keep in mind when we're thinking about this, um, about elf culture and how it connects to literacy and things. And that is, uh, first, elf memory works completely differently from human memory. Um, and this is very important because ultimately this is why writing exists. Um, Is there anybody more annoying than people who run away when they're about to die? Especially when they run away this slowly. Oh man, now that stupid, hang on. Oh my goodness, there are like three message bearers I was aggroing over here. All right, go away. All right, I'll answer the question while I'm sitting here waiting for these fools to move off. Um, okay. So, writing was always only a substitute for memory. Um, I am not going to fight you. I don't care. Um, it was only ever a substitute for memory. Um, oral cultures, people who are raised and trained in the context of oral cultures are capable of feats of memory that most modern people from a literate culture would consider entirely impossible. Um, that's always an important thing to, rem to remember. So uh, let me get just kind of back up and talk about oral cultures and literate cultures in general. This is a, th uh, there is a very common failing of imagination um, that modern people have when they're thinking about the past or they're thinking about other cultures. And that is we have lived in a dominantly literate culture for so long that we have largely forgotten. Like we, we don't even know about like what the alternatives to that are and what they look like. In our society, it is certainly true that someone who is literate, notice even uh, Nicomachus Flavius in your, uh, in the terms of your question, 
you were assuming that like anybody who is educated is like will surely will like be literate right that it's kind of correlated between the two and that you know maybe people from like lower classes would not be literate but people from higher classes probably would um why why should they um uh it's um that's only true within the context of a society like ours it is certainly true that in our literate society which um, you know most of whose operations completely presume on the fact that everybody is literate which means that if you're not literate you are indeed at a very serious disadvantage um and that therefore you know, only the most like poor and marginalized people would not be literate because, you know, I mean, that's just, that's, it's the way our society works, but that is not in any way, um, that is not in any way the norm. Um, the, in a, if you have an actual oral, oral society, um, then you have then you have a society in which literacy is not needed or even if it's used like there might be written documents this was true for much of the middle ages for instance um this is one of the reasons why i talk about this the way that i do because my time as a medievalist um led to a lot of frustrations in this regard especially with students who just uh, couldn't see this basically um, and insisted on equating literacy rates with in with like education or even intelligence and it isn't true literacy is for most of the middle ages was a specialized skill like n everybody in the society didn't need to be literate any more than everyone in our society needs to be an electrician for instance um, I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that we're that we're talking about there. Um, I mean, as a society, it's awful useful to have electricians around, right? But because we do have electricians around, we don't, in fact, need everyone in our society to be an electrician. And it was exactly the same with reading and writing um, back in earlier days. Did I get them all? Oh, yes, I did. Finally. All right, we have cleared the quests from this corner. Oh man, do I have to go back for paraffin? I do, to Nardal and Amandine. You know what, while I'm over in this direction, why don't I just do that? Why don't I just do that? I will, um... yeah. Um, yeah, JJ, actually, that's a really interesting parallel. Not everybody in our society feels the need to be computer literate, and that doesn't automatically say anything about their learning. Yes. Now, I, I would I would sort of be a little bit careful in that, depending on what you mean by computer literacy. If you mean um, like being able to use computers, it is like swiftly becoming harder and harder uh, that is, computer. the ability to use computers is swiftly becoming like literacy in our culture, um, such that you're increasingly uh, and more and more s seriously disadvantaged uh, if you cannot do it at all. Um, however, I would, I would say, JJ, things like computer programming, basically, um, would still be in that category. Many people can do it. It is a, it is a common and a commonly important skill, um, but that doesn't mean that, again, like all educated people do it. And if you can't do it, you're ignorant and stupid. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, like I said, reading and writing, there there are like several different sort of kinds of cultures. Some cultures in which they don't do writing and reading at all, and then there are other cultures in which okay so i admit when i came down this route i was thinking that um i was going to come to a cliff and jump off it which is why i was riding my other steed but um 
I guess I can get in my war steed, and then I can get away from that fool sooner. Um, but, um, anyway. Um, no, 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 when I'm talking about writing, Davy, I literally just mean able to form words. Uh, like, to know how to how to make written communication. That's all I'm talking about right there. Um, so, um, anyway, you got a society where nobody, where there is no writing. There are no books. Um, there are no, um, you know, there are no written records. Nobody reads, nobody writes. Everything is done orally. And you can have cultures of great sophistication where that is true um, and they can have magnificent stories um, you can have a even if it is illiterate in the technical sense you can have a very literary society in which great stories are written and retold and enjoyed um, you can have a people who are um, a people who are more like versed in stories, um, more used to. Um, yeah, you think of the class of people in our society who read, who read stories, as opposed to just not like consuming works of fiction in any form, right? Um, and uh, that body of people, the body of people who don't read, you know, that is to say, who don't enjoy and consume fiction, the percentage of those people is probably higher in our society than in many illiterate societies, many oral cultures, um, where the telling and listening to stories is often a core part of their, a core part of their, of their culture. Um, Anyway, so that's... Oh, hang on. I recognize this intersection, which I just took a wrong turn on. Um, so, um, anyway. And, and then, of course, there's uh, there, are, there are literate cultures, um, more like ours, or like basically from sort of from the Renaissance forward, we were a much more focused on literacy culture um, and but you also have like the Middle Ages sort of uh, transitional ones where it's still primarily um, it's still primarily an oral culture so again you people people will often talk about like you know ignorant uh, you know the ignorant peasants of the Middle Ages and yet um, they're not necessarily ignorant. Um, you know, most of the, uh, I, I, here, here's another thing. People will, um, uh, people will assume that since, uh, since the Bible wasn't available in vernacular translation, since it was only available in Latin and most of the common people didn't speak Latin, um, that most of the common people had no, like knew nothing about the Bible. Uh, and had no access to the Bible. Um, but I bet you that your average medieval peasant could beat your average modern observing Christian for Bible knowledge because they heard the stories all the time. Heck, I bet you they knew more stories from stained glass and mosaics and things like that in their churches than most people do from the Bible that they don't actually read very often. Um, so, um, anyway, that's... <clears throat> hey, is there still more paraffin up there? I didn't see any. Uh, let me go back since I'm here. Still got the quest tag up here. There's probably another catch. I'll look for it. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so um, uh, this is just to say, 
I, I always feel like I have to give this as a sort of not a disclaimer, um, but it's an important piece of context to recall. And because Tolkien himself was very like strong on this subject, um, because he studied <clears throat> mostly oral cultures and had an enormously high respect for the um, sophistication of their stories and the the you know how awesome and sophisticated they were even if they're different from us um, and that at the end of the day really kind of is the issue um, that people have is they assume that different equals worse where else would the paraffin be I mean, I didn't actually. Ah, ah, round the corner. Okay. Um. So um. Anyway, the um. There we go. All right. You know. Oh, look, it took the one off LMD. I've only got one paraffin and one flint left, so I think I can just go back to the Beacon Hills now. I probably could have finished it out here. I thought I had to go to each of them. No worries. All right, I'll head back then. Cool. Um, so, so this is important because it's important when we discuss the different cultures in Middle-earth. It's important to keep this in mind, um, that you don't let yourself fall into the accustomed modern habit of chronological snobbery with regard to these other cultures. And I wouldn't want any of you listening to think that when I am talking about, oh, these, this was not a literate culture, that I in any way mean to imply that they're like ignorant, inferior, or unsophisticated in some way for that reason. Um, so let's go through them we know for instance for sure that rohan is a uh, an almost entirely oral culture their literature is entirely oral um remember what happens when remember what happens at the um the funeral of theoden does uh, somebody stand up and do they get out a really impressive old book, you know, of like uh, the records of the kings and from the book of the records of the kings, read out, a, um, uh, read out, a, 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 you know, the, the, the names of the kings and their great deeds. Is that what happens? No, that's not what happens. Right. Instead, a, a minstrel stands forward and recites the woof recites the the uh oh help i'm stuck Gah. okay let's try that again um uh anyway so um so yeah they they bring out a minstrel who recites the list of the kings and who could doubtless also recite their deeds uh, and the records of their houses as well, right? That's an oral culture. Um, we are told this by Aragorn when they're approaching Metaseld for the first time, they're approaching Edoras for the first time and uh, are being asked. Um, remember Legolas and Gimli are asking about the Rohirrim and he, t and he says they, that they write few books but sing many songs. Um, uh, they are, um, um, anyway, this is, um, they are a, pri they are a primarily oral culture. Um, there are in fact some written records, presumably an influence from Gondor, um, which is a much more literate culture than theirs. Um, and I don't think that there is, um, uh, I didn't, I, oh, sorry, I already had my hat on. I forgot. Oh well. Um, I um, 
Gah! I'm gonna maybe want to actually return to where my where Griffith is riding through the fields here. Um, okay, hat on. Yikes! All right. Um, so um, anyway, but let's take Gondor. How literate of a society is Gondor? In fact, yes, they keep written records. Yeah, they have a library. A library in the sense of um, having a place where, like, books and records of ancient days are stored. It's not like a lending library or something. Um, average people on the street, average soldier in the a soldier in the army of Gondor, would they be literate? I don't see any reason to assume it. My suspicion is that in Gondor. Um, uh, it's a little more than a suspicion. I think that there's evidence that Gondor is more like the situation I was describing in the High Middle Ages. More like the um, uh, literate person as electrician model. Um, because remember, we meet one of them. Findegil. Remember his title? Findegil, King's Writer. Now, is it possible that King's writer means like, you know, everybody can write, but this guy is so good that he is a pro. So he's like, a, you know, he's like a professional calligrapher or something. Um, is it possible that that's what that means? Yeah, it's possible. Um, but it all, it seems much more likely that just as some people are trained as you know, bridge engineers, and some people are trained as soldiers, and some people are trained as, um, um, you know, whatever, all kinds of different things in Gondor, right? Um, I think I'm lagging here. It says this trampled grass is already in use, but it just seems not to be. Come on now, you can survive this lag. There we go. Um, that you know that that he is trained as a scribe, that he is trained as a writer. So, writing books are valued and used, but that doesn't mean that the average person, you know, wants or needs to use them on, you know, a daily basis moving forward um and so I, I i doubt it i don't see any reason to think that and i see at least one reason to think not like the that title that job title it sounds like a professional job title um and that's just what i would expect to see in a society where the, the average person cannot in fact read or write um uh, Hobbits seem actually to be pretty far above the curve. Um, oh, I'm getting into warband territory. Let's get out of here. Um, hobbits seem to be pretty far above the curve. That is to say, hobbits seem to be more commonly literate than almost any other um, culture that I can think of in Middle-earth. Um, because with hobbits, we see something that we just don't see almost anywhere else. And that is an average person casually reading and writing just like for fun, essentially. Right? The way that they write letters to each other. Um, okay. Finished all those. find a runaway horse. Oh, the Antwash Green's collecting uh, uh, collecting herbs on the way up to Rauros. Yes. Um, Phil, yes, for fun and for keeping lengthy family trees. Yes. Yes. Um, so, I mean, there is some kind of record keeping element to it, but like you have to admit that they do that for fun, too. You know, 
Um, I think I'm going to go back to town. Yes, JJ, that's good. In Bree, we can see, similar to the Shire, um, we see that Butterbur values his reputation as a lettered man. And that's very interesting, isn't it? Um, it tells us a couple things. One, literacy is sufficiently common in Bree that even an innkeeper, who's kind of an important guy, but he's not exactly like ruling class or something like that, right? Um, that even he um, can learn literacy. So that's something, right? But the, um, and it also shows that he's proud of it, right? He values his reputation as a lettered man. So being literate gives ha, comes with a certain amount of cultural cachet in Brie, apparently, right? That's interesting to hear too. But also, of course, he wouldn't value it to the same extent um, if it were super common, right? It also tells you by far, by uh, by no means is everybody in Brie literate, right? Um, or even the majority. It would seem like it is probably the minority. Um, uh, yeah, he's a business owner, I agree. Um, as far as Sam, I'm sure people are already thinking about Sam as well. You'll remember that his father was hoping that no harm would come from Sam learning his letters. Um, and this leads him, that is the gaffer, straight into recalling his advice to Sam that Sam not get mixed up in the business of his betters. Okay, hang on, I got some other quests to hand into you, Glanhar. We must not stand idle. There's yep. much to be Struck done. some fear into the hearts of those brazen scouts. That's just what I did. And got your straw and sticks. Enemies surround us. Yet we will defy okay, them. Okay, go to Narvel and the Beacon Keeper and ask his help in finding weapons, helms, and rough cloth to dress our stand in men. Okay. All right, I can do that. Um, anyway, what I'm saying is I do think the Hobbit culture primarily um, and Bri we um, notice also that Butterbur um, seems to be I don't think they have a postmaster in Bree, as far as I can tell. Um, there's a milestone here. Did I do the milestone? No, that's an anniversary pig. It's not the same thing. Now I'll keep it in the war stead because I'll want to go back there someday. Okay. Here's the. Oh. Did I accidentally kill? Oh, the, were you the Caltrops quest, Bernoth? Will you aid the horse lords? Yes, it was. Okay. It pains me to leave behind the steeds that trod upon the road before we discovered the enemy's traps. But with fewer mounts to carry our men through the forest ahead, our journey to Gondor grows more complicated. The wounded steeds shall heal in time, but I hope we are enough to turn the battle to our favor. Our own steeds were fortunate enough to avoid the traps on our approach to Ostrimen, but they have ridden long and their shoes must be worn. Ostrimen surely bears no shortage of horseshoes. All right. Gather horseshoes for the riders three. I really hope that we're not going to end, like, dwindle down to, like, and I'm going to be having quests called the rider one uh, by the end. Um... Okay. I think, yeah, it looks like the horseshoes are all pretty local. Well, I'll just keep looking around here. Yeah, there is another one. Um, all right, now to elves. Elves are a very interesting case. There are 
two reasons to keep written records at all. One is because memory is imperfect and even finely trained memories don't retain everything, right? So, um, though, I, many people know this, but some don't. Um, oh, shoot. Is it Plato or Aristotle? I think it was Aristotle. Was anti-writing. Um, he thought that the like increasing popularity of uh, of oh I'm supposed to shoe the horses directly, huh? Where are they? The horses that are near you are not your horses. Where are your horses? Oh, by the stable master. Okay, fine. Anyway. As, uh, as in Greece, literacy became more and more common, Aristotle um, disapproved. He, or rather he cautioned against it. He said, you know, if this continues, then the skill of remembering things, like people's memories, will get really, really bad. Um, it is important. Like it is, uh, writing is a crutch that we shouldn't need and certainly everyone should not need it and if we go there right if we if we if we allow that to become you know a center of who we are then we're going to suffer for it individually and as a culture and he was so not wrong right i mean how many of you even know the phone numbers of your immediate family members anymore right um, absolutely uh, the skill of memory fades um, and in, again almost comically in comparison to what memory was like in older days um, anyway so but now elves elves not only have long lives they have a completely different relationship with memory. They, um, it's not even that they have perfect recall. It's just that it works completely differently. Like they can walk in their memories, like their memories are in 4D, you know? Um, so in, so that, so that's just a problem that elves didn't have. They didn't need to supplement their memories with writing. But of course, there's another reason why people tend to write things down. And that's because people die. People are mortal. And, you know, what's up here? Gonna be a nice view? No being obscured by trees. Okay, there's the river. Um, so, um, so yeah, so like they, they, they have perfect memories and they don't die. So they don't need to, I mean, to, to think about like keeping records across generations so that people in future times will like always remember the thing. Now there are other things that you can do to make that happen, right? Um, monuments, for instance, that's one of the purposes for monuments. Um, you think even um, even like in the Bible, you think about how, remember the uh, when the people swore the oath to Joshua when they were crossing into the promised land and Joshua erects a stone there and says that this stone shall stand here in memory of the oath that you made and um, people shall ask, you know, your children will ask, what's the stone for? And you'll tell them. That's so that's one way of moderating this like intergenerational issue that the people who, you know, saw a thing and remember a thing will die and you need a way to keep track of that. So writing is a good plan. Um, uh, 
but again, of course, elves... There are other ways to moderate that, too. Of course, in many oral cultures, um, it was still primarily about, like, training, right? So you would, you know, it was important to have one, you know, the old bard teach all of the songs and stories uh, to the younger bard so that, every, you know, people will, you know, the memories will still pass down. Um... I was coming through here doing the burrower quest just to see if I would find any other quests in here. Okay, here's the heart of the quarry. And I don't see anything. I only see burrowers, no other mobs. And I'm not seeing any other quests or quest rings floating around. So I guess there's nothing else in here. This is far less ruinous. You can tell they still use this one. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, so elves have neither of the problems. But of course, elves don't die. So they have perfect memories and they don't die. So like, why would you need to write something to hand it down to your grandchildren? You just tell them, right? Um, you'll still be there. So Tolkien actually said that writing did not become popular among elves. Like, it didn't really catch on until elves began to die in large quantities in the wars in Beleriand. Because now we have a legacy issue, right? Now we definitely do need to... Um, hang on, I'm going the wrong way going back up that hill, aren't I? Yes, I am. Um, now you've got a legacy issue. Now you do need to hand things down because you can't be sure that you're going to be there for your grandchildren. And when things are happening like the fall of Gondolin and stuff, right? You know, when whole civilizations are collapsing. Gondolin's not a good example because it was one of the later ones, of course. But um, when whole portions of the, you know, when whole cities are falling and being burned, you cannot count, in fact, on the idea that things are going to be remembered. And so, therefore, um, you'll want to write things down. And this is why the f most famous elf writer and scribe is Pengalod of Gondolin. Um, and he did his thing towards the end of the First Age, when most of the other kingdoms had fallen and Gondolin was still around and, you know, Pengalod was like, okay, it's pretty clear that we need to keep records, written records of the first age and try to help them to survive because you know what? Um, a lot of things have been lost because so many elves have died and whole elf, you know, kingdoms have been wiped out. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what if their memories ever mess up due to a brain injury? No evidence of that happening. I'm not sure that elves are, are elves, are elves uh, like susceptible to concussions? Um, hang on. I'm trying to think if there's any textual evidence to support that question or not. Um, do elves get concussions? On the horses. They don't have like quest uh, sparkles. Um, yeah, I don't. I can't think of any uh, examples of um, elves with brain injuries. What is that over here? Gondrad, there you are. What the heck? Well, have I a choice? No? 
You have clearly come from beyond these walls, and this bodes doubly ill for me. First, because if you came from out there, then Lady Glonhar will deem it safe enough to send me out there. And second, because she has surely sent you here to summon me for just that cause. Unless she merely wishes to whip me with another thirty lashes of her tongue. Oh, I deserve the lashings well enough, but even a guilty hound will hide his snout from his mistress's wrath. Well, there's no escaping it. Let's go and hear my lady's command. Okay. Um, anyway, but the, the other thing about, seriously, about elves and concussions is that we know that elves had a very strong power of uh, recovery from wounds, which would usually kill a human. And I don't know, but I see no reason to think that that would not apply to head injuries as well. Um, so are, do elves recover more quickly? from concussions can they heal nerve damage uh, better than humans I see every reason to think they do yes. okay let's see she's always up to something is she not I'm afraid that when the men marched off to Minas Tirith they tore the place apart and left things in utter disarray swords and helms are lying all about Ostrimen you know you'd think they'd have taken most of those with them I'm just saying Right, like, um, anyway, all right. Some will, someone will have to gather them up, and I'm that I'm afraid that friend would be you. As for cloth, I think you will find that laying about, lying about, presumably. I doubt it's laying eggs in the storehouse, but we'll check. Let's see if the cloth is laying eggs in the storehouse. Um, is there evidence of any elves that went insane? Not just like, no, Feanor does not count. Made bad choices that other people might call colloquially crazy. But that's not the same thing as actually having like a psychotic break. Do we have any evidence of elves who do that kind of thing? I don't think so. Fanor wishes he could plead insanity, but he can't. I'm. Yeah. Trying to think of any examples. You've got the madness of Turin, for instance. Um, the madness of Turin, I'm thinking when he finds Beleg dead, right? Uh, when he discovers that he killed Beleg. Um, he has uh, a break, right, at that point. Um, I can't think of any elves who did anything similar. Mythros and Maglor towards the end? No? No. I mean, they're fully... I mean, the discussion they have is, again, you can say they're making a, like a horrible choice, but they don't lose it. No, I don't think the grief, um, I don't think the grief would count, certainly. Lots of rough cloth in here. All right. I 
going all old yellow line guardian on these rats. I'm gonna clear out my whole allotment of uh, my whole allotment of cloth in one go. I'm pretty sure I can handle the rats. Oops, I didn't get it because I turned away. Um, yeah, they do dumb things because of emotions, but never get their minds corrupted. Yeah, yeah. Um, Storyteller, I think that many, many readers underestimate how different elves are from us. Many. I think that that's a habitual problem, actually. Um, and I I don't think there's anything wrong with them being very different. I think the only reason we if you're resistant to that, I would suggest it's because you're thinking of like wanting to relate to them. And they are sufficiently like us and experienced for us to be able to connect with them in some way. But they're not supposed to be like us. Um, with respect, this is an obsession of the modern reader to identify with things and with characters, right? And to find ourselves in them and to believe that they are just like us. Such that there has been this enormous trend, both in fiction and in film, uh, to reduce the distance between us and the heroes to make them more relatable, right? Um, but one of the very things that Tolkien was doing in his entire legendarium was saying, what stories would happen? How would it be interesting if things were really quite different from how they are, right? What if there were elves? What if there were this separate species who was quite different from us in many ways, and yet we were all living together? What would that look like? Um, but, um, yeah. So he really is, in that way, inv inventing a different world from ours. Um, and, you know, we can just kind of be open to it. But again, he's not made them completely alien. Um, they are, like, they're like us in many ways certainly enough that we can resonate with their stories and find their stories really powerfully applicable to our own lives. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well met. Swords, helm, cloth. Great. Now, we want these to be convincing. We would do well not to slouch in the final step. Yes, I think Bargwen must assemble them. She will do it right. Bring all these things to her if you would. You will find her further south in Ostrumen. Yes, I did find her. And now... Perilous Parley. We must not stand idle. Gondrad, There's you craven rascal, done. listen to me. I have received grim tidings that my sons and perhaps your lord never reached Minas Tirith, but were waylaid by some enemy captain or highwayman on the way. As you should rightfully have been with them, I am sending you to treat with a ransomer. Burglar, I ask this of you. Go with Gondrad and keep him safe. He has much to answer for, but I deem a foolish death to be insufficient punishment and a general waste of penance. I have no more capable I, I have no one more capable of keeping him safe, I am afraid, and must rely on you. Okay. Okay. Alright, so meet the ransomer. Now we're meeting. There we go. That's more like that's why I was going up into the mountains. I'm like, maybe I'm supposed to meet the orc up here. Right. Out in the middle of nowhere is more what I expected. Okay. Um, but first let us go find Bargwen again. Okay. Okay, 
first. I can turn in the quest to Hutha. Our mission is dire. These have been difficult times for the others and me, but war halts not the wishes of a few men. To think it has been but eleven days since we fought before the Hornberg. Thank you for that reminder of the timeline. Actually, that's really helpful. Much has happened in so short a time. You have no idea, man. Do you have any idea how much ground I have covered since the Hornberg? I mean, just look at this whole portion of the continent I've explored in intimate detail in that whole time. Almost all of Gondor I have toured, every town by town. And Athelion, and then gone through the entirety of Minas Tirith, bottom to top. Okay. In Alas indeed for poor Leofdag. His absence weighs heavily on us, but I fear Ulf has felt it most keenly of us all. We must soon speak of the manner of our parting, but now is not the time. It is better that you speak to Ulf. To see a familiar face might ease his pain, even if only for a moment. Hey, Ulf. The dejected Reaver. Thank you for your help. Ah, Grifflet. I was gladdened to see you among the men here in Ostrimen. In truth, I have been deeply troubled since the Battle of the Hornburg. The loss of my friend tears at me, and as it does, I feel a lingering guilt for the fates of the others that fell that day. Oh, that life would allow the time for mourning, but never has that been the lot of a warrior. I have more yet to say about Leofdag, but I shall not speak of it here. There are too many eyes upon us. I need you to do this. Indeed, this is not the place for us to speak of such things. We are overdue to set out for Tower Druidon, but we can spare the time to make clear these matters. Will you accompany us to the Beacon Hill Erelas? It lies to the northeast of Ostrimen and should not be difficult to spot, even with its flames quenched. I'm sorry to be so terse, but you shall understand when we meet again. Ride! Back where I just went. See? Okay. Fine, fine. No problem. We talked to Bargwin here. The men have gone off to war. What's all this then? We are left to worry. Bargwin frowns at the things in your arms. She wants me to make what? Straw men? Well, if it keeps the barbarians out, I suppose there's not much choice in the matter. No matter if my fingers bleed or my arms fall off. Really? She takes the things from you and gets directly to work, still muttering under her breath. Uh, okay. She's going about it cheerfully, Lady Glanhar. Okay, so... Good, I'm almost done with the local quests now. Uh, well, she has begun? Let's... Good. That is one step taken towards our safety. We have not strength of arms, burglar, so we must rely on our wits. It is good we are possessed of wits. Enemies surround us. Our straw yes, soldiers look fierce, but something is missing. What is it? Ah, I know. The banners are not hanging. Oh, okay. I love doing menial quests for local towns. It warms my heart to think of all the towns that have been touched so intimately by the sweat and toil of Grifflet. Uh, true, they have not hung in many years, but I feel they must hang now. It tells the barbarians and orcs out there that we have not abandoned this place and are not hiding. We will make them think again about attempting an assault. Okay. Aid Bargwin, and she sounds like she needs aid, so sure. You're right. It is true, um, Phil, that at least I have the gratitude of the locals uh, in compensation. Well, don't just stand there. But Phil, I'm, I, I, I don't give up hope. Because my hope is that when I go back through Gondor after the war, Griffith is going to get like a, you know, a parade in every town. Right. I expect to go back through southern Gondor and find like a little statue to Griffith in every town. <laughs> okay. 
Um, the banners, is it? I should have guessed she would choose the most laborious task short of scrubbing the stables. I have you to help me at least, do I not? The banners will be stored in the storehouse. Okay, back to the storehouse. I kind of suspected that there might be more in the storehouse because the cloth was relatively easy to get and we only covered a little fraction of it, so. Back to the storehouses. Oh man, JJ, apple and boar meat pie sounds really good. Totally agree. Okay, let's see. Banners. Ah. Oh yeah, they're all up here. Okay. Yeah, nice red banners, huh? Okay, five banners. Is that another one up here? No, it's down. Excuse me, scavenging rats. Ah. Aha! Oh, I succeeded in picking it up while the rats were attacking me without being interrupted. Love that. Now I'll run out of here with, in my best Pied Piper Im imitation. Kiting rats all the way. Uh, Davey, the answer is yes, but again, out of courtesy, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not going to talk about that here, because that would seem discourteous. But the answer is yes, there'll be a thing, possibly multiple things. Um, okay. Wild boar is very war. good, actually. I've had we it before. Left to worry and, to worry. and actually, I find there to be... Uh, it's not very gamey. It's not as gamey as like venison, for instance, which I also love. But these are filthy. Oh man, they must be washed. Wash the banners. Okay. See, these are the kinds of errands that Grifflet has missed. It's been too long. Wash old banners. And here Ulf wanted to tell me about, like, how much has happened since the Battle of Pelennor Field. Okay, the well is around here somewhere. There it is. Okay. So uh, it's sad that Bargwin is so overworked, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel really bad for anyone who is submitted to the kind of menial tasks that Bargwin obviously is. It's hard, I tell you. Well... <laughs> Don't just Good. I there. laid all the things hey. out. Take the pile of dirty banners and put them in the water. And then dry them on the poles. Okay. Pile of old banners. 
this is the stuff of which heroes are made. Uh, where are the poles? Oh, I still have to wash more. They're not they're not fully washed. I mean, I'm being very thorough. Okay, and now banner poles. Oh, 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 sorry, I didn't take the banners out of the bucket. I skipped a step. Oh, man. Okay. Putting the wet banners on the pole to dry. Okay. Okay, Barglin, what do you say now? The men have gone off to You've war. given me a moment's no, rest and not complained. Not worry. loud enough for it to reach my ears at any rate. I thank you. I myself could never get work done without complaining. I wasn't going to say anything. Now I will rouse myself and see that these are properly hung. You can tell Lady Glanhar it is now taken care of. Brag of your accomplishments if it suits you. Uh, okay. You're not going to make me hang them around town? I'm actually genuinely surprised by that. We must not stand idle. There's much to be done. <laughs> Bargwin is a tireless worker, is she not? Absolutely. We're beginning to present a proud and fearsome face to any foe who creeps up to our door. Okay, I've gained like half a level in menial, menial chores. Okay, and that finishes that. Okay, so let's go out to Erelas. This is the road to Erelas. I hope the Riders Three survive and live happily ever after. Though if we lost one of them at Helm's Deep, what are the odds we're going to lose another one at Battle of Pelennor Field? Yet another way in which we feel the grim impact of the war. Lotra does such a good job with that. Okay. Okay, Ulf, what do you say? Thank you for your help. Leof Dog was slain by one of her own. To hold back my fury for so long, I shall not let his death go unanswered. His murderer lurks among our number in Rohan. I know it. Dude. How can we find one among so many? And does he dare to strike again so near the king? Mark my words, Grifflet, when we find him, and we shall. None will hold me back from him. Let us lo ride to Tower Druidon, and there we can plan our next move. Another murder mystery. I hope this one ends a little more satisfyingly than the last one did. What brings you to these lands? Griffith, I trust you shall not share. You shall share not. Oh, you mean not, like N-A-U-G-H-T, of what I tell you. 
Layoff Dog's death was no mistake. It is my opinion that it was a conspiracy of the enemy's design. He fell just as our foes were routed, and after surviving so much else, I heard him fall beside me and and call out, and call out. So I rushed to his side. He had been struck by two arrows. Yet if he felt pain from them, he showed it not. Instead, he clutched only at his throat as if he were choking. His breath grew labored, and in moments he was gone. The arrows used to slay him were of Rohiric make, but they bore a poison that none in our company had ever encountered. Leofdog was murdered by one of the men among the riders. Of this, I am certain. Oh, man. What business I confess you? I know less of Leofdog's fate than the others, but it pains me just the same. We became separated during the battle after the wall was shattered. I fell back to a higher position, but I saw Leofdog make for the breach with the ranger and his allies. When our foes made for the wounded, I retreated into the tower to defend them. That was the last I saw of Leofdog. Huh. Okay. Oh, man. Are there still followers of Wormtongue? Okay. You don't trust that Durnhelm fellow, Hologrow? Yeah, there's something sketchy. Something something a little squirrely about that chap. I agree. Actually, hang on a second. So, that's the entrance to Ostrimen down there. Is it? Or is that the entrance to Ostrimen? Yeah, that's the way I've always gone in. How do you get up to the... I've never gone up the road. How do you get to Min Rimen, then? I've always missed that road. I guess it, it's through the town somewhere. Oh, we never closed the loop on the traitor that we were after in Edoras and the Broadacres. Oh, I forgot about that. There was still a traitor at large. No, wait, didn't we up in Stoke? I thought we did something about that. Aha. Here's the way that I'd always passed by because it's immediately inside the gates and you have to... S no, wait, that's just... It's just up to the walls, isn't it? Yeah, this is just up to the walls. Which are kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, what can I see from here, though? Hmm. Okay. So, how do I get up to the beacon? Where's the beacon road? Aha! That one. Here we go.
Yes, this is the way. And we should finish the flint and paraffin quest up here. But needless to say, I want to go to all the beacons anyhow. Boy, this one is the straight stair, whereas most of the beacons are more the winding stair. My goodness, this is a lot of steps. Hey guys, just coming up to get paraffin. Wow. Yikes. That is high up. Isn't there some irony in building a giant statue like a right by a quarry. Maybe they just had a bunch of stone and they're like, we really just don't want to shift this. Let's just build with it right here. And here we go. Paraffin. Flint. Oh, yeah. Okay. Look at that. We're doing great. It's getting late, though. Rather than go down those 100,000 steps again, I think I'm going to cheat because I'm running low on time. Hi, Narvellan. I've got your paraffin right. and flint. Okay, let's hope that Gonhar's notion is a correct one, and all this light will keep the enemy at bay. No follow-up quests? All right. Okay, then from here, we are going to... Let's do the... Let's do the ransom quest. Except I'm going completely the wrong direction. But apart from that, everything was exactly right. Okay. Now we're in business. Back out. And then... Round the corner to find the. Let's uh, see what we can do here to solve the mystery of the uh, ransom here. Do they really have her sons? Certainly not just assuming that that's true. Oh, there's that whole camp I haven't been to over there. I haven't really crossed this river, have I? Ooh. Huh. Hang on now. What is... Yeah. What is that? Yeah, no, that's that camp. So... Is that an enemy camp? On the map, it looks like an enemy camp. But there's a little castle up there. All right, well, let's see. Got some willows up ahead, so we're near the river. 
Is there a steep cliff? No. Not really. There's probably a bridge over here. No, it's a fort. Fine. That's okay. And the ransom dude is just along this side of the river. Past more of those annoying mounted mobs. Must be getting close now. And yeah, we're getting there. Okay. Up here by the waterfall. Oh, that's nice and scenic. There's nobody here. This must not be the place. Um, okay. Where else isn't the place, do you think? Hope it's not going to be one of those you're not quite standing in the right spot situations. Oh. Ambushers. Okay. I was ambushed. Does that mean that this was the ransom spot? Okay, I just have to defeat the ambushers. I uh, don't worry, your friend will be back in a minute. He just, he had a personal issue. Oh, here he comes. He must have resolved things, more or less. Okay. Is that it? Any more ambushers? Ah, uh, yeah, there were. Okay. All right. Interesting that the Variags are <coughs> so prominently placed out here in this direction. Okay. I'll go on and meet the ransomer. Okay, so we're we're not calling it off. We're we're gonna persevere. Up here, huh? Oh, here we go. Hey, Gondrad. Looking good. Jarl Achiz, huh? Hey there. What do you need? Am I to believe that one of you is the keeper of Ostrimen? You are what? A fool of a stable hand and a hired guard? You must think Jarl Achiz dull indeed. Achiz lets out a savage chuckle. You drew the short straw, did you not, stable hand? Ha <laughs> ha, but this guard looks to be of some metal. Well, no matter. I hold two sons of the Lord of Ostrimen. In exchange for their lives, I demand two things. Their worth in gold, and because I think you, burglar, can win it for me, a brooch that was stolen from me by a rival Jarl of the Variags. Okay, so Jarl is your title, and uh, Achiz is your name. Gotcha. You will find his camp to the northwest, near the Furian Wood. He'll have it in some chest or other there, I am sure. 
When you have these things, you will bring them to me in the cellar at Bar Nathron. Now go, else I raise my price again. How about we just break in and get them out? What do you say, Conrad? No good will come of this. Why look here? I still have my head on my shoulders. We didn't put much we didn't pull much wool over his eyes, did we though? Still we must count ourselves lucky. Let us get going rather than test our luck any further. Okay. That's it, huh? We have Lady Glanhar light. listens to your we account of the meeting. So it is a cunning own. wolf we are dealing we with then. Make that too. Hmm. Gondrad, I am not done with you. Don't go creeping off. I must think a moment. What does this man stand to lose, to gain? What does he know of what know that he has not said? She falls silent with a frown. We must not stand idle. This cunning this wolf has named done. his price, and I fear it must be paid. I ask the two of you to take this gold and to fetch the stolen trinket and see if you can indeed buy back my sons from these men. It did not escape me that he first offered three sons for ransom and now counts but two, yet I will not dwell on it. There is no time for grief or fruitless worry now. We must act. But I beseech you both, show caution. You are treating with scoundrels and must be cunning yourselves and cautious beside. I would give much to see my sons alive before me, but your lives are not among the things that I would give. Now go. Okay. So, near the rival captain's camp. Over in Furion? What? I thought it would be up here. On that hill I was looking at. No, huh? Lavender? I didn't really notice your name before. Lavender? Yes. What a bind. I ran here in a fright and left my flocks grazing out upon the hills. I'll have to gather your sheep for real? Man, I have not been erranded so thoroughly as I have here in a long time. Okay. Sure you don't dare go out. I'm not afraid of those men, no. No. They'll be eaten up by wolves and swordsmen. Right. Up by Erelos. Of course. Where else would they be? Hey, that's not near Erelos. Okay. Okay. All right. What time is it? Oh, I got five minutes. Not going to be able to get very far, though. So, okay. So, next time, I'll collect the lost sheep. I'll collect the lost horse. I'll do some uh, uh, herb collection see what's in this uh, town up here, town slash camp at the top of the hill there. Again, I assume I'm going to come back to that. I'll find Kalanad, work my way across. We're getting there. I think one or two more sessions and we'll be done with the Beacon Hills. And then off back to Tower Druidon. Accusations in the camp. That should be good. And then off towards Pelennor Field. We're getting there. Okay. Um, so I won't be back next week, though. Next week, I will be in Denver, Colorado for uh, Mountain Moot out there. Really looking forward to, to meeting folks. And then um, we will um, we will see. I should be back the week after that. I'm not 100% sure what's happening that week, but I think I'll be here. Uh, so, uh, so I'm tentatively planning, anyway, to be here on the 10th of November. Um, all right. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, guitar came. Yeah, we can talk about colonialism and the Dunlen things. We've talked about that some. I mean, I toured all of Dunlen, and I'm sure it came up uh, during then, but it's been a while since we've talked about that. We could talk about it again if you have a specific question. Um, but anyway, all right. Thanks, everybody. See you guys in a fortnight. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.